So, I mean, most physicists believe that as they pursue their theories, particularly about most fundamental things in, in uh, foundations of physics, that the more beautiful, as, as people say, the mathematics or the more elegant, which generally means kind of a, 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 uh, a simplicity or a symmetry or something that doesn't go on and have a lot of um, kind of a of uh, free parameters that you have to force, but just kind of looks, is indications of the truth of it. And then there's some deep association between the structure of the physical world and some idealized mathematics. You've kind of had the opposite view, that uh, that kind of thinking uh, might actually be dangerous for physical progress. Is that, is that right? Yes, that's right. Um, I think what is dangerous here is that a lot of physicists are not fully aware of what they are doing. So they are really using beliefs about the beauty of natural law that they are imposing on the kind of ideas that they even look at. So they're limiting not just how they deal with the ideas, but even the ideas that they're willing to, to uh, consider. Yeah, so the world of mathematics is large. Um, so if you want to develop a new theory about um, the fundamental nature of reality, you have to make a decision. What math do you pick? Mm -hmm. And uh, what physicists do is that they use additional assumptions. Um, you, you may call these metaphysical assumptions. Um, I prefer to call them aesthetic arguments. Um, because that's where I think they come from. Um, it's basically this expectation that nature has to be beautiful in very specific ways. Um, you already named one, uh, which is simplicity. So there's this general assumption, I think, among people who work in particular in particle physics, that uh, whatever we find on the next deeper level um, it has to be simpler than what we have now. Um, it's just that there is no good reason for this to actually mm. be the case. So I, I think it's a it's a um, it's an unjustified assumption that scientists should not make. Well, let me give you let's take two examples that are well known. One is, uh, are the orbits of planets. Uh, early in science, uh, the assumption was that these would be perfect in some platonic solids or some some multi-level um, um, uh, spheres within spheres. Uh, but then it was determined that these were elliptical, gravitational, and there was, there's no fundamental formula for, for any of these, whether it's a comet or an asteroid or, or all the planets, that they all have their orbits because that's the way they are. On the other hand, we have for a general relativity, or a special relativity, E equals mc squared and then Einstein's field equations, considering that they're describing all of space-time, remarkably concise um, formula. So those are kind of the two extremes that we're dealing with. And as you confront a problem, you know, maybe you don't know which is which, but I'd be inclined to kind of, as you go more fundamental, to try to look for greater simplicity. Well, there is a sense in which looking for simplicity is just using the scientific method. Um, you're trying to find better explanations in the sense that you want a theory that explains more with less. Um, so that's not problematic. That, that's good scientific methodology. Um, but this assumption that the laws of nature have to become simpler as we go to shorter and shorter scales mm -hmm. just um, has no deeper justification other than that, that it's a belief. Uh, that um, physicists bring. And, and in fact, it, it, has, it has not always been true. You could argue that actually the laws of nature that we have known sometime in the 1940s, 1950s were the simplest. Uh, that was before it was widely acknowledged that there has to be a weak nuclear force. Mm -hmm. You could argue that actually the laws that we use in the foundations of physics have been the simple sometime in the 1940s, 1950s, um, at a moment uh, in the history of physics before it was widely acknowledged that there has to be something like the weak nuclear force to explain observations. And later then there came also the strong uh, nuclear force. 
at that time, we basically only had electro the electromagnetic force and gravity, uh, both of which are pretty simple theories. Mm -hmm. But once you start adding uh, the weak and the strong nuclear force, mm -hmm. it, it becomes more complicated again. And uh, now a lot of um, physicists think that if we get to the next deeper level, then it must become simpler again. Mm -hmm. And that, that may be the case or it may not be the case. Wasn't Einstein the one who said, uh, make it as simple as possible, but not, not simpler? I mean, uh, 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 you want it as simple as possible, but you can't. <laughs> yes, that's right. He was a smart man. <laughs> and, and, uh, and your point is we don't know where that's simpler, not simpler than what it really is. We don't know where that is. Exactly. Well, certainly exactly. if you look at the standard model, I don't know how many pages it takes you to look at because you have to have every <laughs> parameter and everyone has to have, a, have its own constant. And it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's kind of a mess. Well, it's, it works. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, considering that it describes everything that we see, um, I would say it's pretty simple. Um, but certainly you could wish for a theory that is simpler than that. Uh, so we have these 25 particles with all their constants, and I keep forgetting how many constants there <laughs> are. Um, and um, yes, a lot of theoretical physicists can think of uh, simpler theories. And I think that they just hope that one of these simpler theories will turn out to be true. For example, there's this idea that the three forces that we have in a standard model are actually reflections of one unified right, right. force, which would be so much simpler, uh, it would be so much prettier. Um, and this idea of a uh, grand unified theory has attracted a lot of attention. It has also been experimentally tested. Um, the um, simplest idea for grand unification have already been ruled out in the 1980s. Um, so far, there has not been any evidence that grand unification is actually, you know, real. Um, but I think that a lot of theoretical physicists still believe that it kind of has to be real because mm. it's such a beautiful idea. Mm. And the reflection of, of that back on mathematics ex itself, <laughs> would seem to be that if it were the case, which you think is not necessarily the case, but if it were the case, that as you got more and more fundamental in physics, you became more and more simple or concise in understanding, that would seem to undergird the idea that, that a fundamental pure mathematics has some sort of a, 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 a greater uh, participation in the foundations of reality, not just in the foundations of physics. No, I don't think so, because it's really about a particular selection of mathematics that we're talking about here. Um, you know, the, as I said, the world of mathematics is large. Right. Um, it contains a lot of theories that would not be simple. It's just that um, those are not currently considered as candidates. Um, so physicists are really using their a very narrow-minded notion of beauty that they try to impose on the laws of nature. And I just think that this is not proper scientific methodology. Mm -hmm. It's something that scientists shouldn't be doing. And I think that they are not really aware of what they are doing, that, that those are actually beliefs. Um, in fact, they often try to justify this um, by uh, appealing to historical developments like the ones that you were mentioning already with the platonic solids. Um, but I, they are cherry picking the examples there. They prefer to recall only the cases where arguments from beauty worked. <laughs>